This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Good stuff. Well, here comes uh, Albert Matt Bloom, as we now know him. He's the Intercontinental Champion at this point. He's taking on Edge, who just recently, again, as we said a little bit earlier, won the King of the Ring. Albert's going to win this one after hitting a low blow and hitting the Baldo Bomb, as he called it. During your most recent time in the WWE, Kurt, I got to ask, did you spend any time at NXT to see what Bloom was doing down there? Yes, Matt Bloom is an incredible uh coach he has done an amazing job with that talent down at nxt what stood out to me when matt bloom first started uh and you know when he was baldo or you know he, he actually was matt bloom when he started because it was at the dory funk dojo that's where him and i trained at the beginning he was amazing the guy for a big guy he sold everything his mouth his back he was he was very particular about what he did and that showed me that he would become a great coach. And I think that he's going to become a better coach than he was a wrestler because mm -hmm. of the way he went about things. He learned the business top to bottom. And he, he is very successful at being the coach of NXT. He's done an amazing job so far, and he will continue to do that. Yeah. I mean, he's been down there for a couple years now, certainly making an impact. They obviously leadership must believe in what he's doing down there. No one is going to stay in a spot like that for too long. So it's really cool. You know, for me as a fan, it's the guys that you wouldn't expect that end up in some of these key roles. We mentioned, you know, whether it's Billy Kidman, Matt Bloom, Shane Helms, not necessarily world champions at their craft as far as the WWF big one, but man, solid performers that became great coaches. Well, you know, there's that rumor that, you know, the most talented guys don't really have the mind to teach. Um, you know, there, there, there's a lot of rumors going around about that. And, you know, would I be a good coach? I think I'd be a good coach. I don't think I'd be as good as Matt Bloom or as good of a producer as Billy Kidman. So these guys are so passionate about the business. And I think they're still hungry because they didn't get the yeah. success that I got. And I think that that what makes them continue in the business and want to excel in another job, a different category of the business. And I think that's the reason why they're so successful because they continue to stay hungry. That's a great point. I haven't thought of, I didn't think about that one, but you're right. Right. So they didn't experience maybe that euphoria that many of you guys have, and they feel like they still have a lot to give the business and are doing it in different ways. Yes, sir. You're absolutely right. Wow. That's good stuff. Kurt, how about you? Have you ever been approached or wanted to be a pro wrestling coach? Well, uh, Triple H, uh, he contacted me about seven months ago and wanted me to uh, help out down at NXT, uh, be, a, be a trainer. And he also, he only said, hey, all I need you to do is go over stuff with, with the talent. You can do it from home on a computer. You can uh, do a Zoom call and just, you know, go through the tapes with them of their matches and tell them what they did right and wrong. And uh, I said, I'd be interested. And I never heard back from them. So uh, long mm -hmm. story short, they were interested, but they, you know, at the last second, they must have backed out, which is okay with me. Yeah. And that sometimes it's not right now, but doesn't mean, you know, that's the case for a long time, you know, down the road, there still could be opportunity. Many moving pieces in the last year with pro wrestling. When you think about everything that they've had to transition through with the pandemic and changes and staffing and WWE certainly had quite a bit of uh, turnover in the last several months. So I'm sure when the timing is right, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. Yeah, they have, they've had to do a lot of adjustments. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So we have edge here. He's uh, taking it to, to, to Albert at this point, man. And, Edge, what a fantastic performer, too. I just want to touch on him here for a minute. Uh, he's back in the business doing what he loves. Uh, we're going to see him at, at Money in the Bank several weeks from now. It's already been talked about that he's going to you know, take on Roman Reigns. Just can't be more happy for this guy. You mentioned at one point he was one of your best friends traveling around with. You got to be ecstatic for where he's at now. Yes, and you know what? I was always backing him up. I always wanted him to succeed, him and Christian. We were best friends, and uh, th those two were the real best friends, but I, I got into the mix eventually. But th both of those guys had a lot of success in their careers, and I always rooted for them. I always wanted them to be at the level I was. 
Uh, it took them a while. They weren't th quite there. Uh, Vince had different plans for me when I started. He excelled me to the top right away within my first year. But it took Gadge a good, you know, three or four years to get up there. So um, I was always cheering him on, and I always wanted him to be at the level I was. And eventually he got there. Well, we would have uh, Albert getting the big victory there, which is a pretty big victory beating a king of the ring. <laughs> a guy who just went king of the ring. You get the clean pin here. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.